Hi everyone, uh, so we are here to understand uh, certain concepts of analysis and analytics. Just to give you an overview of uh, the agenda that we are going to cover uh, today is uh, we'll see what is data overload, what is analytics, introduction to analytics, analytics overview, uh, the business issues, growing need for analytics across industries, the case for analytics and different types of analytics. So as you must be knowing uh, nowadays across all domains and organizations, data is growing drastically. So gone are the days when you know we had the data storage, I mean the capacity in, in terms of uh, the megabytes and gigabytes. Now organizations and different domains are generating data which is running in, in billions and trillions and the size of the data is in, in petabytes and zettabytes. So you definitely need a strong, powerful application system that can not just store the data but also help you doing a good analysis or analytics on that data, generate some meaningful insight from that particular data and that insight will help your top management taking better strategic decisions. So this is the time of big data where, where the data, I mean there is no size, there is no upper limit of the data. So it's the, this data is, is really huge and voluminous and you need a, a powerful you know, Hadoop-like architecture to handle this you know, mass storage of the data. For example, when I say big data, when I define big data, uh, there are many definitions. So one can describe this big data as the data that is too large and too complex for conventional data tools like Excel or the core databases that we have to capture, store and analyze. So when it comes to analyzing such big voluminous data that is running in petabytes and zettabytes, Excel-like applications or any other legacy application will really fail or will take too much time to process the data and generate some meaningful insight. So here you need a power, powerful platform like Hadoop that can not just to help you storing the data but also you know, will help you analyzing the data and generating some meaningful insights from it. So some examples of big data, some, some use cases, practical scenarios as you see. The volume of global equity trading is, is approximately $44.8 trillion. Data generated in one flight from New York to London is approximately 10 terabytes. Number of tweets per day on Twitter is approximately 500 million. Number of likes each day on Facebook is around 3 billion. These were some uh, uh, examples, some scenarios. Uh, taken, I mean concluded by a survey agency a few years back. Now this, these numbers would be different and I'm, I'm sure these numbers would be much more than what you see here listed in the slide. So it seems 90% of the world's data was generated in just last two years. So right from the beginning if I consider, it seems 90% of the data that we have today was generated only in last two years and rest of the data was, 10% data was, you know, I mean, you know, the previous data. So when I say big data, there are many factors and features that describe big data. There are three uh, V's, major V's, characteristics of big data, that is volume of the data, variety of the data, and velocity of the data. So as you know, the volume of the data is nothing but the size of the data, the, the capacity of the data. When I say variety of the data, this is nothing but the ability of your system to support various types of the data. So it, it shouldn't be just the uh, conventional or the data that you have recorded on your desktop systems or laptop systems, but it, it should be the data which is in, in the form of audio or which is in the form of video or which is structured, unstructured, semi-structured data. So your tool should be capable enough of supporting any variety of the data. Then comes the velocity which is the frequency at which the data is captured in your uh, data uh, storing environment. So again this should be flexible enough to support any, any varying frequency uh, of data capturing. Only then you will be able to manage this, this mass data which is coming and getting recorded in your transactional systems. So there are many other features also of big data but these are the three, three major V's the volume, uh, variety and the velocity of the data that describes big data.
I mean, we record lots of data on our or on our current transactional systems and various other you know data storage devices. But the data is simply useless if you are not able to draw some conclusion, draw some inferences from that particular data. So raw data is of no use unless and until it is converted to some meaningful information that and that meaningful information is helpful for the top management in, in taking better strategic decisions. So it seems data on its own is useless unless you can make sense of it. Now when you define, once you understand uh, the data pattern and once the data is converted to some meaningful information and you are able to draw some inferences from that particular data, you can start doing analysis and, and analytics on that particular data. So when I say data analytics, it is nothing but the sci a scientific process of transforming data into insight for making better decisions, offering new opportunities, opportunities for a competitive advantage. So again, there are various definitions of data analytics. This is one of the many definitions that we have where you convert your raw data, the unstructured data, the semi-structured data into meaningful patterns and you are able to identify behavior in the data and with the help of that you are, you are able to you know, draw some inferences or conclusion that will help your organization do better and, and make revenues and profit. So let's understand what is the role of analytics across business organizations and domains. So analytics is not so much about tools or technologies. It is a way of thinking that uses knowledge, tools and techniques to extract valuable insights from unstructured data which then leads to a business strategy. It seems prior to this we used to uh, store the information in, in the conventional database systems. One major drawback or limitation of those conventional database management systems was they expected everything to be in, in relational format, they expected everything to be in tabular format. Only then you will be able to query them or you know do some analysis or perform some analytics. Advantage of this big data platform Hadoop is you can also have your data in structured, unstructured or, or semi-structured format. Still it will help you you know querying that data, doing some analysis on the data and generating it into some meaningful information. So, Analysis is not so much about tools or technologies, it is a way of thinking that uses knowledge, tools and techniques to extract valuable insights from unstructured data which then leads to a business strategy. So as you see this diagram, you can connect to your past performance, your past data and you can convert that past data into meaningful information that will help enhancing your future performance. So here we use various components like data and statistical models, we, we perform processes like quantitative analysis. Uh, evident based management systems we have where you know you can you can justify that data and you can draw inferences from the data and then we have this informed business decision making systems so when i say data analytics data analytics is the science of analyzing data to convert information to useful knowledge and afterwards this knowledge could help us understand our world better and enable us to make better decisions so analytics refers to the collection of tools, techniques and skills. This aid the investigation of past business performance. So we have various tools, we have various analytical tools and applications like we have SAS, we have R, we have Python, we have SPSS. There are n number of tools available that supports or come up with various techniques that will help you connecting to virtually any database or any type of data and you can access that data in those environments. You can apply your business logic, your algorithms or the models that you have developed and you can generate some meaningful insight from that data. So these are some business issues which can be answered by data analytics. For example, uh, which screenplay of the movie or show will give maximum number of views on YouTube or TRP on, on TV? Will there be any fraudulent activity in our hospital, if yes, how to prevent it? Which screenplay of the movie or show will give maximum number of views on YouTube or TRP on TV? Which industry segment is yet to witness growth based on its historical data? How do I predict future stock prices through Twitter data, news data, intraday trading data, consumer behavior data, etc.? So these business dilemmas can easily be answered in case if you have power, powerful analytics implemented ac across your business organization. So it seems according to some, some recent articles and surveys, this data scientist is going to be one of the most appealing job of this century.
So a business analyst is not able to discover insights from huge sets of data of different domains. Data scientists can work in coordination with different verticals of an organization and find useful patterns, insights for a company to make tangible business decisions. So it seems there's going to be 15,000% increase in job postings for data scientists in the US between this particular year, according to a survey. So obviously this is going to be one of the most appealing and demanding job in, in future. So why this analytics, you know, uh, I mean, became so much important or why it, it why, why its need was, you know, uh, became very critical. So it's, it's because of the various uh, transaction capturing systems that we have installed across our business organizations and various devices which are contributing to this data. So there's growing need for analytics because of the generation of large amount of data from business transactions, because of avail availability of the large data storage systems at lower cost, and availability of better tools and technologies to analyze the large data sets. So generation of large amount of data from business transactions contribute to this need for business analytics. So data harnessing companies store each piece of information generated during the business operations and customer interactions. So data is generated, data is analyzed, and then learning from the data is used in the decision making and process, process optimization. So as you see how the volume of the data increased in, in various years in this slide, so as and how we are progressing further and I mean lots of data is coming in our transaction capturing systems and we definitely need a system, a stable system that can analyze that scalable data and you know help us uh, doing better, uh, performing better uh, uh, decisions and you know that will help you know enhancing the revenue and profit of any organization. So did you know 4 billion number of transactions every year is performed in this in this uh, Walmart. There are some 900 number of stores across the globe you know for this retail outlet. There are 10,000 to 1 lakh number of stock keeping units of this particular uh, uh, retail uh, uh, retailer so this definitely needs a powerful system to analyze your data okay to store the data and then come up with some some strategic business decision that will help enhancing your revenue and profit so understand the case for analytics the business need so the business environment today is more complex than ever before businesses are expected to be diligently responsive to the increasing demands of customers various stakeholders and even regulators so the goal is, in most cases, the primary objective of an organization that seeks to turn to analytics is the revenue or the profit growth and the optimized expenditure. Solution is, organizations have been turning to the use of analytics. More than 83% of the global CIOs surveyed by IBM in year 2010 singled out business intelligence and analytics as one of their visionary plans for enhancing competitiveness. So broadly when we categorize analytics, there are three types. There is something called as prescriptive analytics. Then we have something called as predictive analytics and descriptive analytics. So when I say prescriptive analytics, this is something which will enable you taking smart decisions based on the current data that you have. So this answers your question like, what should we do? When I say predictive analytics, this is predicting the future based on the historical patterns that you have identified, the behaviors that you have identified, you know, in your past data. So this answers your question like what could happen. Then comes the descriptive analytics, which is all about data mining to provide meaningful business insights. So this answers your question like what has happened. So broadly, we can classify analytics into these three categories called as prescriptive, predictive and descriptive. To understand it further, we have some uh, practical use cases, business scenarios here. For example, uh, uh, when we answer those questions like why do airline prices change every hour, okay, this has the involvement of the prescriptive analytics. So using prescriptive analytics, you can, you can understand why do uh, airline prices changes every hour. So this airline companies identify the peak hours where the maximum number of passengers travel. So during weekends or the week starts or during the you know prime time like evening or morning when maximum number of people travel, they understand. So this airline companies understand the travel pattern of the passengers and accordingly they price the tickets. So they vastly use this prescriptive analytics to understand 
the customer behavior and the passenger behavior and then accordingly they they charge them then comes the predictive analytics so we have a, a very good scenario given here to understand this pre pre predictive analytics like how do grocery cashiers know to hand you coupons you might actually use so when you visit some outlet to buy certain items repeatedly they have all your data stored in their transactional systems they can analyze the data understand the pattern of the data they can identify the behavior of the data with that data they can conclude that how many times you visited the outlet how many times you bought a particular item okay what was the category of that particular item which all are the items that you haven't bought you know so far and they can hand over you the coupons that you might actually use in future so they can identify the category of items that you buy every time when you visit the outlet and certain items that you haven't purchased yet okay you'll they'll they'll push you for those particular items by doing this predict predictive analytics and there are higher chances that a particular customer will convert into a potential buyer then comes this descriptive analytics uh, again we have a scenario given here like how does netflix frequently recommend just the right movie so based on your download pattern and the movies that you have seen in past this website understands the category of movie that you watch every time and they can suggest you okay that these are the movies that you haven't downloaded or you haven't seen yet and they can you know push you for those particular downloading you know for those particular movies so here they use the descriptive analytics so they can understand the past patterns and they can suggest you you know certain movies that comes in your category of choice thank you very much